What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some new or updated add-ons that have been updated for Blender. I will link to them in the notes below this video. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just a note, some of these are affiliate links, meaning I do receive a commission if they are purchased. And I also do receive some copies of these add-ons from the developers in order to try them out. And so I will link to all of these add-ons in the notes down below. All right, so first off, we've got an add-on that's trending on the front page of the Blender market market, which is Geoswarm. Geoswarm is a tool designed to help you simulate um, different swarms of things, right? Be that birds or um, bugs or moths, other things like that. It's got a number of different swarm features built in um, that help you do different things, right? So you can set these up where they act a certain way. It also comes with a library of different animated creatures, right? So you can do different things with it. Um, so you've got everything from uh, these little bugs that seem to be all around my house that drive me crazy, all the way through different worms, and there's birds and rats in here, all sorts of different things. You can use this tool in order to simulate those. And so the way that's gonna work is you're just going to have your mesh, in here and you can see how the different behaviors are in here right so you've got like rats you've got ants beetles a bunch of different presets and you can use this in order to add those so say that you were to add the cockroaches preset you can click on the option right here to add swarm and so when you do that what that's going to do is that's going to create this spawner and the spawner is going to look for surfaces so we want to create a surface so we'll just call this flat surface we'll drag our plane in here like this. And then we wanna make sure that we've referenced the flat surface, but notice how this spawner is going to find that surface and it's gonna spawn um, the cockroaches in here. And so then you can take this spawner and you can adjust it, right? So say that I was to, you don't necessarily wanna scale it out because that's going to um, that's going to cause distortion in here. What you want to do instead is you want to adjust your domain size using this setting right here. But you can use this to set the size of the creatures that are spawned, um, as well as how random that size is. And you can adjust that seed right here, as well as if this is kind of an endless spawn, or if it's something that's just going to kind of spawn them all one time right like this and then just drop them in here then you can adjust how quickly they're going to move and other things like that and so you can set this up with curves and have um, your simulations follow along the curves or you might also use an attractor which is going to allow you to attract the different bugs to an object that you set so there's a number of different setups and way that you can ways that you can modify the swarms in here as well. So if you guys are interested, I can do a more in-depth tutorial on this one as well. Um, but this is definitely an interesting swarm spawner tool for Blender. All right, so next up, we've got one of those tools that seems super simple, but um, actually I think is pretty valuable. So this is the bookshelf generator add-on. Basically what the bookshelf generator does is it's a geometry nodes based generator um, that you can use in order to quickly generate bookshelves, um, which is actually really cool. I'm into architectural visualization. So having things like this that kind of sit in the background and you can easily adjust um, is super interesting for me. Okay. And so one thing to be aware of with this one is you do want to make sure that the texture files are included in the same folder as the bookshelf generator itself for the textures to work properly. Okay, and so basically the way this tool works is it's designed to allow you to quickly generate shelves. You can adjust things like the length and width of the shelves like this, as well as the height, the number of legs, and the number of um, spaces that are in here. So see how you can adjust this using these sliders right here. And so you can use this in order to really quickly generate multiple different bookshelves. So say I was to move this over like this, we we'll go ahead and duplicate it this. Now, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you make this unique when you do this, but you can adjust things like if this is made of planks rather than made of metal. Um, you could um, add in different wood materials. So either yours or his, which he has a couple built in, but then you also have the ability um, on your shelves to do things like randomizing holes. So if you want this to be something that randomly doesn't have planks in here, you can use this in order to make that adjustment. Now there is a function in here for drawing holes, which I haven't really had a chance to do anything with yet, but this is basically designed to help you uh, procedurally generate bookshelves. Now you can also toggle these assets on or off or include your own assets in this decorative assets folder. And 
you can also put books in here instead. So see how this gives you the ability to include books and you can set this to randomly hide books as well if you don't just want a few books in here and you can mix the books and the assets, which you're probably gonna wanna toggle back on. But this procedurally generates these bookshelves and I think this is one of those cool architectural tools that could make adding this background stuff in your scene really easy. All right, so next up is a tool that I want to get a little bit further into. It's the Paranormal Tune Shader, which has just been updated with some additional features. I've been meaning to talk about this one for a while and just haven't had a chance to get to it. So this is a tool for actually creating tune shaders. And so basically what it is, is it's designed to help you, uh, it's basically designed to help you create um, more complex tune shading inside of Blender, right? And he's got some examples of why this is different than the RGB tune shader that's in here. But um, he's got a ton of different materials in here that can do different things that can create this tune look, right? So he, you can kind of see some examples on this page. And at first looking at this, I didn't really think it was that complex, but now getting into it a little bit more, um, this is actually, there's a lot of stuff in here. And so in his new version, he's basically added in like different halftone nodes, um, the distance fog node, a bunch of different modes in here. And he's actually got really good documentation. So if you click in here, he's got like a full documentation that he's written. Um, you can download the full PDF file as well, but the whole documentation for the whole thing is actually on Blender Market, and you can see this. So it kind of walks you through the way this works. It basically uses shaders in order to create that tune look. And so if we jump over, and so if we jump over into Blender, he actually includes a README file right here that talks through um, everything from updates and changes to what he's planning on doing with this, which he's planning on adding things to it in the future. But then there's also reference scenes that you can toggle on where you can actually see what the different settings do. So he's actually set this up where you can, where you can uh, click on the shaders and adjust them like this in order to see what this is going to do in your scene. And it's actually using your lighting in the scene um, in order to do this. So if you click on the play button right here, notice how the shading actually changes and adjusts based on that light location. But you've got the ability to do kind of these flat shaders in here. Um, you've got kind of the curve shader. And then you've also got some other interesting things down below, right? So you've got the RGB shader for Eevee. So if you jump over into Eevee and you hit play, you can see what the lighting is going to do with these, uh, with these objects, right? Or if you don't have the animation in here, notice how you can make this change, but you can actually see what this does. So this allows you to set highlights, it allows you to set shadows, other things like that, um, directly inside of Blender. And then you can actually use this to drop these shaders in because they're asset based. You can actually drop these shaders in here and then adjust them using your asset browser. So say I wanted to drop these on my Bonnie model. Um, so let's say I wanted to add just like the base metal in here. I can click in here and I want to make sure that I've applied this material to everything um, in my model. So I'm just going to apply this base metal here. Oh, one thing when you do this, by the way, is you want to make sure that you've set this to actually append rather than append reuse data. So these are going to be editable. So notice how when I drag that in here now, I can actually make those changes and adjustments on my model as well. Um, so you can do that and then you can also drag in different ad additional shaders, right? So And so there's additional things that you can drag in here like this add ink node. So um, let's say we wanted the shader to kind of drop in here. This is going to give you the ability to add the ink look to your model. So you can use these shaders in order to create those different looks directly inside of Blender. So something I need to get more into for sure, because it's actually way more complex than I originally thought that it was. But if you do want to do tune shading, this has a ton of different things for tune shading built into it. All right, so Firewish is an add-on from the same developer that gave us Smokewish a couple weeks ago. And so if you remember, Smokewish was a collection of pre-rendered um, images and also VDB files for smoke, meaning you could use them to quickly and easily simulate or show smoke in your models. Well, Firewish is a similar add-on that basically comes with pre-rendered and VDB fire assets. And so these are basically pre-rendered files 
with lighting associated with them that you can bring into your scene um, in order to do a simulation of fire. Um, some of these are more images and the VDB files, I suppose, are more um, simulation or more 3D. But this is basically a collection and you can see on this sheet which is which, um, but you can just bring these into your model really quickly. And so say you wanted to select one of the explosion files Right, you can import this asset, and what that's going to do is that's going to bring in this pre rendered animation. And so, if I hit space, what that's going to do is that's going to play inside my scene, and you can scale that way up like this, move it in the background, and you can set up your camera like you have an explosion going on in the background like this. And so one of the cool things about that is this is going to cast light and there are options down below um, for that as well. But like if we jump over into cycles real quick and take a look at this in rendered mode, notice that's actually casting light onto my Bonnie model right here. Notice how that light is changing based on the size of the explosion. So what you can do is you can have that explosion file in the background like this and you can actually see the explosion. It's going to cast light in here, but you don't have to bring in a crazy complicated VDB file. So some of those do loop, um, they're loop animations, and then some of those are the VDB files. And so the VDB files, um, which are going to be in the ground fire and custom v VDB, and so some of those are gonna be those VDB files, right? And so if you bring in the VDB file, what that's gonna do, you can kind of see this over here. So this is more of like a three-dimensional object and you're only really gonna see it fully rendered out inside of cycles, right? The VDB files do take longer to render, but that's actually something that's gonna live in like the 3D space. And then if you run the animation, that's actually gonna change and adjust, but notice how that kind of has a volume associated with it. But you can adjust things about those VDB files, right? Like the temperature over here, as well as some of the colors. So if you want this to have a different color to it or something like that, you can use this in order to adjust those files and those are gonna be a lot more adjustable. But if you're looking for a library of um, ground fire and VDB type assets, um, you might check this one out and see if it's a good fit for you. All right, and then finally, we've got a tool which I think is pretty promising. Um, it's this knitting generator add-on from Procedural Generation. So th this is a little bit more of a simple add-on, but basically what it does is it uses geometry nodes in order to create kind of a knitting look on your objects like this. So when you open it up, basically, what it's doing is it's taking a surface and it's generating this like knitting material on here. So you've got the ability to um, basically add subdivisions in here, right? So if you don't add subdivisions, it gives you kind of a like high level look at this right here. And then you can adjust things like the radius of the knots that are in here, the radius of the fibers, other things like that. But you can use this in order to quickly generate that knitting. And then you can add the subdivision. And when it subdivides it, notice how this gets a lot more like the Suzanne that's in here like this. So this actually does a pretty good job of creating this material in here. And let's say we were to adjust this and we'll add a new material. We'll just make it very simple. Um, we'll add like a different color or something like that. Oh, and then what you can do is you can reference a material down in the node setup down below in order to set that material. But you can see how this actually does a pretty good job of generating this knitting look on here. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing what else we could do with something like this. I think it's a fun tool for creating this look. Um, you might get better results by applying a material, but this is actually generating this in 3D. If I jump over into rendered mode, let's just add like a light. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode here. So the cool thing about this, right, is because it's all in 3D, you're gonna get the shadows and the other things like that associated with this actually being three-dimensional material. And then you can apply that to other objects, right? I just appended the geometry nodes file and then selected it in here. And notice how I can use this to apply this to my Bonnie model. The one thing I will say about it is it's kind of slow. So if you have a slower computer, um, that's definitely something to kind of think about and be aware of. But you can definitely use this to add that knitting. Now, if you have like ultra heavy geometry, this might be a little bit slow, but I do think this is kind of an interesting tool that I do think kind of does what it says that it's going to do. It takes takes your object and it generates 3D knitting based on your geometry. All right, so 
that's all I got for this week. I've got more coming next week. There have been some other additions which I want to talk about but didn't have a chance to get into this video. So I will link to all of these in the notes down below. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these add-ons. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.